My name is Heather MacArthur, and I'm the clinical director of breast cancer at UT Southwestern in Dallas, Texas. And this year at San Antonio, we had a new session called Clinical Controversies. And one of the controversies that we discussed or clinical challenges that we discussed was the impact of the Keynote 522 data and how we reconcile that with other existing data. So in Keynote 522, the addition of pembrolizumab to neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by adjuvant chemotherapy improved event-free survival at three years by 7.7%, so an unprecedented improvement in cure rates. However, on Keynote 522, concurrent adjuvant co-administration of pembrolizumab with capecitabine or olaparib was not permitted. So we discussed the adjuvant capecitabine data that predated Keynote 522. That was a standard of care based on the CREATE-X data and subsequent meta-analyses showing overall survival advantage. And we do have data from the metastatic setting showing that capecitabine and pembrolizumab can be safely co-administered. And so I have adopted that as my practice until we have more definitive data um, specifically to administer capecitabine together with pembrolizumab in the adjuvant setting for patients who do not achieve a pathologic complete response. Then Dr. Domchek discussed the Olympia study, which is the study that led to the standard of care adjuvant administration of the PARP inhibitor, Olaparib, for high-risk patients with germline BRCA mutation-associated breast cancer. Of course, Olaparib administration was not permitted on Keynote 522. We do, again, have data from the metastatic setting showing that PARP inhibitors can be safely co-administered with immune therapy from both the Mediola and, and other related studies. Um, and so that has become our current practice in the absence of data in the curative intent setting is to administer Olaparib for one year in that patient population who's at high risk of recurrence together with adjuvant pembrolizumab. There are many cooperative group efforts that are ongoing looking at escalation strategies for patients who are at particularly high risk of recurrence so the Optimized Residual Disease Study is planned through the Alliance Cooperative Group, and that study will look at combining an antibody drug conjugate together with pembrolizumab for those high-risk patients who don't achieve a pathologic complete response. And then there are de-escalation efforts, too, as part of the goal to optimize or tailor treatment decisions, which is to give less cytotoxic therapy for those who are most likely to achieve a pathologic complete response and be cured of their disease. So it's a very exciting time to be treating breast cancer, and we're really tailoring treatment decisions and have a myriad of new options for our patients with triple negative breast cancer, which is extremely exciting.